Straw Bell versus Aircrete. Now, Straw Bell, um, it creates a very eco-friendly house. Uh, they can be very beautiful, uh, depending on if you have them built or build them yourself. Um, they can be quite expensive, of course, but basically a straw bale house, if you don't know, um, you have two types. One is a load bearing house in which, uh, typically there's a roof plate that is strapped to the foundation or an all thread is used to hold the roof to the foundation and the weight of the roof literally sits directly upon the straw. Uh, the other option, of course, is bale infill. Uh, it's much uh, simpler to get code approval for. Uh, it's actually more common because the roof doesn't shift or move any. And, you know, it can be a steel building inset uh, or straw infill wall. Uh, you can use wood beams. Uh, you could use post on the inside. But basically, once your straw is stacked up, your roof is on, you uh, you stitch uh, some kind of metal to it so that you have a place to attach your plaster. And uh, then you beat the bales into their final shape. Use a saw or weed eater, trim off the excess, make it nice and flush. And, uh, you know, if straw is available to you, uh, that's great. Um, in parts of West Texas, uh, straw bale, I mean, it takes a couple of years. You have to get on a waiting list to get it. Um, it's kind of become a really popular thing for people to come out of California and Austin and New York, places that have a, a lot more money than a local economy. And they're buying up this material, driving the price up substantially uh, and really reducing the availability of it. So then there's also the issue of getting quality straw. Uh, you know, what's the moisture content of it? Uh, how does it actually, uh, you know, how does it smell? What does it look like? Uh, and uh you know, sometimes it's difficult to get good tight straw bales that's also of good quality and is also very dry. Um, obviously, with aircrete, uh, moisture is not an issue upon the construction. Once you have a roof on it and you dry out, the wall's good, uh, and then you seal them, uh, they're going to stay dry. Um, now, I'm not going to say that straw bale is necessarily any cheaper than air creek construction either it just depends upon what again what's available in your area um, some of the uh, advantages of straw bale is that you know you you're using a waste product um, you're uh, locking up a little bit of carbon in your home uh, they have a wonderful insulating value it can be r30 uh, or more uh, with the thicker uh, bales and depending on if you turn them on the edge or you set them flat and um, you know straw bell walls are at least 18 inches thick and this really adds to the aesthetics uh it, to me it makes a home feel really nice and cozy um and you know due to the thickness of the walls you know uh, every window can have a shelf or a seat in it um, some people don't like that i actually think it's really cool straw bells pretty easy to understand uh, you stack some bells drive some pins on it uh, sew on some wire uh, and then plaster it, you know, uh, straightforward. And so it's also an easy skill to learn. Um, and it's not excessively labor intensive. Now, um, it used to never bother me, but it has gotten to where being around a lot of straw dust really messes up my sinuses. Um, I don't really know why that's become the case. Um, and a lot of people uh, have that issue while building with straw. It's just It just gives you absolute sinus misery. Um, however, you know, once it's sealed up, that's not an issue. Um, and of course, straw bales are biodegradable and they, uh, they, they've, there's houses in the United States that are over a hundred years old. Uh, so if they're properly maintained, they can be a long lived structures. You, of course, uh, when you're done with the house, it easily breaks back down into the environment. Uh, it's completely non-toxic. And, uh, so, you know, there's so many advantages to straw bale. Uh, if you're in a, climate that needs heating or cooling the insulation makes it absolutely an extremely comfortable house in fact you can build passive structures with straw bell uh, insulation and, and thermal mass uh, it works beautifully uh, and it can actually be done in pretty much any climate and you know there's a kind of like a, a saying uh, cool them with an ice cube and heat them with a candle uh, that's not far from true the disadvantage to to straw bell is that you know you have to do it yourself or if you do hire someone it's can be quite expensive 
straw bales are not permitted by local codes in a lot of places. Uh, locally here, they don't like it. They're so, so scared of uh, mold and mildew that uh, they're just not very cooperative at all. Um, straw bales need to be kept dry because moisture is detrimental. So if you ever do uh, have a roof leak or uh, something, then it could potentially require some substantial reworking of the house, uh, replacing large portions of the wall. Um, I have seen cases where uh, the plaster got cracked and you know, they used a large chicken wire uh, as the uh, lath that they sewed onto the outside. And, uh, you know, some mice managed to get into the walls and, and fill up a large section of wall with mice tunnels and pee and poop. So, uh, you know, it has some potential issues. Of course, if you're maintaining your house, it's not really going to be an issue. Um, in areas of extreme humidity um, and rain, uh, straw bell construction becomes somewhat questionable. But yeah, you know, there's not much bad to say about straw bale. I mean, just like with any kind of construction, really, uh, it's about making sure you're appropriately building for your climate. And uh, man, straw bale with its insulation value is absolutely great. Now, aircrete, of course, as we've discussed in others, you know, we don't have the pest problems. Um, as far as environmental breakdown, you know, it's going to be a multi-generational house. Uh, I, when you're done with it, aircrete soft enough, uh, you could easily knock it down, uh, throw it in a driveway and run it over enough that it turns back to dust. Um, and I don't really see that as a pollution. Uh, it could be something that is recycled, not necessarily to the environment per se, but back into human use, uh, in a, in a, in a new way, such as paths and roads or bases uh, or a base, uh, material for, uh, either a driveway or a future home. So it's not a total loss. Uh, obviously, aircrete, um, you know, if you're talking about building an R30 structure, the price of it becomes pretty much equivalent to um, just your standard uh, uh, two by six type wall. And so ultimately, um, the price for it tends to be a little cheaper. You know, if you have access to affordable straw bale, uh, and if you do it all yourself, then ultimately straw bell is cheaper. You have to weigh that out, so make it appropriate uh, your climate and your area and availability of straw. You know, how practical is it to ship straw from Louisiana to Northern California? You know, that adds quite a lot of cost to it. But then if you have a farmer uh, that can bail it for you uh, locally, uh, you can get it, in, you know, very cheap. Uh, in fact, some local farmers have done it for uh, three and four dollars a bale. So, you know, it can be cheaper, but as always, it just depends upon your situation. So, you know, what are your thoughts on uh, aircrete? What are your thoughts on uh, straw bale construction? You know, put your comments below. It'd be nice to have a little discussion about that. Who do you think is the winner between straw bale and aircrete? For me, again, aircrete has to win because I can create those same R30 thick walls. I can do it reasonably affordably. Um, and I know that we have this cement addiction in our world, but it is a building material that is available in mass in our society, the way we choose to live it with who we allow to be in charge of us. So because of this, uh, cement's readily available and really it's pretty much readily available anywhere in the world. So it's, it's very convenient and you don't have to get on a waiting list for straw. You don't have to, uh, suffer the loss of getting a batch of straw that got rained on while it was in transport or was not stored properly to begin with and comes in already kind of moldy. Uh, you don't have the issues with, uh, like allergies while building. However, with aircrete, of course, you know, when you're dumping the uh, cement into your mixing container, then yeah, you've got some pretty nasty stuff. You've got to wear a mask. You don't want to breathe it. So I kind of see them pretty much equal in that department. You know, you have to wear a mask with either one. Um, neither one really produces a, a toxic house. Both of them create a nice, uh, clean, breathable, healthy space to be in. Um, the shapes can be uh, any shape you want with either one. So, you know, I cannot pick one as just an absolute clear-cut winner. Uh, both of these are wonderful structures. So again, make it unique. Make it to 
your availability and your convenience. You know, AirCrete, uh, just some simple tools, a trailer, I can throw a few pallets of cement, a drill, an air compressor, a uh, foam machine, a generator, and some hand tools uh, in the back of my truck. And I can drive off anywhere and I can build one of these right now. And if I wanted to build a straw bale house next week, uh, or I was in a situation where I really needed shelter, I would not be able to find straw. So anyway, if you like this sort of thing, uh, check us out at tinygiantlife.biz. Um, we're teaching the Trilingua Rapid Build uh, Air Creek Cast Workshop. We're going to uh, start from the ground, and we're going to cast and finish an Air Crete cabin that's 16 foot in diameter. We're going to do it in just 14 days from start to ready to move into. And uh, it's a great opportunity it's the most complete uh, learning experience of the year because we are going to not only wire the house we're going to build a solar system from scratch we're going to assemble lithium ion batteries as well as a battery management system solar cells charge controllers and inverters and so these this whole system i mean everything solar cells batteries everything is going to be not much over two dollars per watt uh, per watt hour whenever it's finished. So, you know, that's pretty amazing. And it, it alone has the opportunity to save you thousands upon thousands of dollars. Um, and also you get to learn all the other skills that go along with building a house because that's where a lot of people kind of get stuck. You know, uh, how do I put in my wires? How do I actually wire a house? What is safe? What's not? How do I do my plumbing? Uh, how do I do my drainage? How do I treat my wastewater? Um, you know, uh, how do I collect rainwater? You know, there's so many questions out there. Um, and often AirCrete gets built uh, by other companies and it's literally just a shell, uh, usually on a foundation. And that shell is not livable. I mean, it's, it's, don't get me wrong. If you're in a third world country, just that shell is tremendous, great benefit. But, um, you know, I think most of us want to live at a certain level of comfort uh, and beyond even comfort. We want to live in a certain level of, of beauty. We have certain expectations for what a house gives us. Uh, and that's why it's important to have the skills to finish a house, because it's in the finishing of a structure that you incur the greatest expense and the greatest need for high level skills. So check us out, tinygiantlife.biz. Click the link below in the description if this interests you, if it resonates with you, and you want to find out more about the uh, Trilingua Rapid Build Workshop. Uh, this will be the last year that it's ever going to be this cheap um, for the amount of value that you're getting out of this. Um, you know, it's, it's nothing. Uh, traditional paths of learning are substantially more expensive and much more time-consuming. And whenever you finish this uh, course, uh, once editing's complete, you're going to get a copy of a new digital video course of this project that covers the finishing skills and the casting skills, everything that's needed to build this cabin. And that's going to be a course that's worth $300. So you'll get that free for attending. So, you know, I've done everything I can um, to help everyone who wants to learn, to have the ability to learn and to gain all the skills and to get that experience because it's one thing to read about it. And when, then when you get in the real world uh, and you deal with the logistics, the availability of materials, and you have to begin to make choices between them, uh, things start changing and people often get lost uh, with electric wiring. I, I've seen so many unsafe things done uh, and there, they can be fire hazards or, or outright electrocution hazards. So these are the skills we kind of pick up. The event at Trilingo is going to be honestly pretty fast paced. So to supplement with the course, you'll get a pre uh, event uh, educational package and a post event educational package in addition to that course. So at any time you'll be able to quickly reference and brush up on what you learned. And so, yeah, you know, I've attended a lot of other workshops because I really believe in investing in myself. You know, I want my skills to be the best they can be. I want to do a good job for myself. I want to do a good job for other people. And there's really just nothing. Experience trumps every theory, idea, and thought. 
It's whenever you've gone through and actually built the buildings from start to finish, you begin to actually understand it. You don't put things out of order where you have to demolition your parts of your house or hire really expensive labor to come in and fix mistakes. And you can stay on budget and you can end up with an end result that's as good or better than what you originally planned for. So, um, you know, as someone who attends workshops and continues to educate and learn my, for myself, um, I feel like this is a tremendous value. Um, I have paid $1,700 to attend uh, workshops that were shorter than this, and you literally just were just labor and nothing more. You show up, you work, you're told what to do. No one explains anything to you. Uh, yeah, you get to have some good uh, uh, fellowship around the campfire. You get to hold hands and arm um, and do yoga and stuff. But, you know, when you really want uh, to get things done, when you really expect to learn something um, and you're asking instructors and they're like, well, I'll get back to you. And they're, they're perturbed and they're not uh, they don't want to be bothered with teaching you, any, um, even though you're paying for the workshop. And there's a lot of experiences like that out there that cost a lot more than this workshop. So I've done everything I can to bring all of the information together that you need. And um, honestly, the value is, <laughs> it's a really good value. Like I said, you're already getting a $350 course out of it. Uh, and you're getting education in all of the skills that are necessary to build your own home. So again, you know, if this is resonating with you, uh, click the link below in the description and find out more. Consider attending this year, and uh, please consider that October, uh, there is a very, very, very busy time down in the Trilingua area because we have the International Chile Finals. Uh, there's uh, as many as 15,000 people that have come down there uh, during that time period, in addition to all the fall tourism for the national and state parks. Uh, hot springs, canoeing, uh, and horseback riding. Uh, there's also the Lajitas Golf Resort. Uh, more golfers are turning out. So rooms, uh, the availability really goes down during this time of year. So if you can, make your plans and reservations now. Uh, please don't put it off. Uh, if you're going to camp, there's a limited number of campsites at the lodge. And, of course, uh, anyone's welcome to camp for free uh, on the property or on the, on the site, uh, but it is primitive camping. Uh, we will have some power available through the solar, solar system. Um, we'll have a cook stove available, and uh, we'll probably be cooking something up very simple for everybody to have for lunch. And uh, we want to make this the best experience you can possibly get, as well as give everybody a chance to network and connect with other like-minded individuals, because that's one of the greatest things you get out of these workshops. Also, the connection to other people who are interested in what you're interested in and often think the way that you think. And so you can bounce ideas off one another. And quite often, these wind up in collaborative efforts where uh, two or three people get together and they help each other build their homes. I know a lot of people think that you get free labor out of a workshop and we're getting paid, but the truth is that uh, this project costs money. And at the end of the day, uh, what I get out of it is more connections with more uh, really nice and unique uh, and talented people in addition to a structure that uh, will be something that can be uh, used by the attendees of the next workshop. And if we're lucky, we might be able to Airbnb it out uh, during the busy season of the year. And if you are worried about paying someone else money and letting someone else make uh, something for doing their job, uh, while at the same time expecting your job to pay you at the end of the week, uh, we, don't, we don't need you to come to this workshop. So you just need to click off now. But if you're the person who really likes to invest in yourself, if you're that person who values yourself enough to grow and improve your skills, if you want to live a different kind of lifestyle outside of the conventional, if you want an alternative lifestyle, an alternative house, and an alternative living, then this workshop can definitely benefit you. So if you're one of those people who value yourself, uh, I believe you're going to see the value in all of this that's being offered. So, you know, I would really love to meet you guys. And uh, I know sometimes it's hard to make arrangements and get time off. But uh, next year, this workshop is going to be at least double the price um, because it needs to be an event that at least uh, pays for itself. And it needs to be something that, uh, I mean, 
it is it is my job to build these things and teach these things so you know if i can't uh make a profit at it then i can't uh, i can't offer the service if you i'm sure you can understand that and appreciate that you know everyone's time is worth something and i will promise you that i'll do everything i can to bring you a value that exceeds what you pay um, that is certainly my goal, and I believe that I am over-delivering that value by at least twice the price right now. 